Google Cloud introduced some new innovations in BigQuery editions, compressed storage, and auto scaling. And you're probably wondering, how do I use it to save money? And so today, I have Antoine with us from L'Oreal. Antoine is the data architect. He's leading all data initiatives at L'Oreal. He's been working on Google Cloud technology since 2011. So he's got a big body of knowledge that he's going to share with us today on how they're using that innovation in order to save money. So Antoine, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Let's start at the top here. How are you using Google's data cloud at L'Oreal? Thank you, uh, Bruno, for the invitation. The usage that, that we have is basically a common use case that marketing and cosmetic company can have on, on, on internet using a cloud service provider like Google Cloud, taking as much as possible the maximum amount of data to do analytic use case and take at the end business decision. So the more data we have, the best the decisions are for the marketing and the commercial comp the, uh, teams. And of course, you started from nothing, and now you've got a gigantic uh, amount of data that you're working with and doing machine learning on. Tell us a little bit about the journey there. We started the story three years ago, as you said, from nothing on Google Cloud. And now, three years after, we are approaching more close to petabytes of data ingested every month on BigQuery because BigQuery is the art, the art of our data warehouse, meaning, OK, we use uh, the galaxies of Google Cloud in terms of product because everyone has its role to play. But the center of everything is based on, on BigQuery because we, we, we believe that SQL is now the new common language at L'Oreal that everybody should know and does not require a, a PhD or something else. It's natural, it's easy to use, and also easy to maintain. And you've got thousands of SKUs, 50% uh, of them at least, uh, of an evolution every year, meaning there's new use cases. So it's not only a large amount of data, but it's a lot of users and also a lot of changes throughout the business model. So now that brings us to the innovations we introduced, additions, auto scaling, and compressed storage. You know, How do you think about them, and how do you at L'Oreal use them in order to save money? That's exactly what you say, Bruno. Last year, we sold approximately close to 7 billion products, which means almost one product per people on this planet, which is crazy. So we have to be sure we do the right things for the right use case, because you can imagine L'Oreal can invest massive amounts of money in a use case, and sometimes we win, but sometimes we fail. And that's how we grow up, like Google Cloud, finally. So that's probably why the DNA of these two companies are very close and why we love the culture and the way you propose the product because it's totally close to the approach that we have in the business and in all the marketing ID that we have. So you're a user, of course, of additions, compressed storage, auto scaling. So how should people think about additions as they apply to their workloads inside the organization? Well, you have to know, and you probably know that, that L'Oreal is a multinational company present in more than 50 countries. But basically, the three big ones are Americas, Europe, and Asia, which are three different cultures, three different markets, so three different requirements at the end. So we have to be sure we don't pay for something we don't need at the end, and we only use what we need. So finally, using one version in one uh, part of the world, it's probably enough for a, a, a dedicated period uh, amount of time. And probably in the near future, we'll reevaluate that to use another version because now the, 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 the market is a little bit more mature or it's just simply request a feature that is available in another version. So it's great to be able to be flexible and not fixed into something that it's OK and the same for everyone. So and you're referring to the fact that here you can mix and match the additions across our to give you that level of flexibility. So now yes. let's talk about Auto scaling. So auto scaling, the foundational functionality of additions. How does it benefit you at L'Oreal? Auto scale is probably the the most uh, weighted feature for L'Oreal because three years ago we were discussing about the slots. The slots are famous for companies that are mature on BigQuery, and we were discussing with different companies. But we were afraid. We were afraid because we were thinking, OK, it probably requires someone to be fully dedicated on managing the slot and be as much as possible efficient. And the second factor is the usage that L'Oreal have sometimes has burst. Let's say you have some bursts every night. I don't want to pay someone to be uh, ready behind this computer every night to manage the slot and be sure everything is looking well. So now I give the key to Google and they say, we promise 
it will be very efficient in terms of uh, performance, but also in terms of cost. So you can sleep well, guys, and see you tomorrow. And that's totally changed the vision we have using these kinds of features. And we adopt it instantly. That's excellent. So in, indeed, this auto scaling just follows your usage and it will scale exactly. with the bands yeah. that you've established. So not only gives you this exact billing to the second, but it also stays within the limits that you, you've set. So it really provides you both the flexibility and the predictability. Now, the third feature is compressed storage. So what are the types of compressed storage numbers you're experiencing? And how do you even think about the benefit of compressed storage from a cost standpoint, but also any other benefits for your company? For that, that's another story. Starting three years ago, we were, no worries, guys. The storage on cloud is not a question because it's so cheap. So no worries, put as much as possible the data. That's true because the more data you have, the best accuracy results you have. But in after a certain period, you have to say probably a certain percentage of this data is not required to stay on the platform because it has lived its own life. But you don't know which one. So you need probably some feature to reduce the cost and reduce the footprint that we have. And you probably know that L'Oréal for the future is a program that is passing all the years where the mission is to reduce the footprint that we have on the planet and not specifically on the IT, but IT has to, to play its role on this game. So we choose that feature and we don't have the measure yet officially announced, but it's a double digit reduction in terms of footprint, which is very great without requesting to recode another application, do some reverse engineering or stuff like that. It's something very easy to adopt. So not only does compressed storage has an advantage on the cost structure for your organization, but also plays its role in how it helps your sustainable uh, program for the planet. So that's really great news. Now, everyone listening to us is probably wondering, OK, with such a big workload, such complex use cases, and, and the breadth and the scale, it must be a method on how you adopted these new features. So what was the process? What are the to-dos here that everyone listening to us need to take as a follow-on from this conversation today? The, the way we, we do on Google Cloud, we have divided our environments. We have the production, we have the pre-production, the, the pre and we have the development parts. So normally, your pre-production is almost a clone of your production in terms of amount of data, which help you to reproduce event, anomaly, and operation. The pre-production is what we call the lab, where we do our, all our tests. So when we identify, we have some bursts, we reach some limits in terms of performance, in terms of usage. We say, OK, what are the, the, the features that Google is offering to us? And probably also the additional services, huh? because not, not, not everything is only around BigQuery, but it's here to show us what in reality we will have in production. If we continue like this, we'll have a problem in terms of latency, in terms of cost, or in terms of sustainability. And we take decision and we test on this environment. And after we switch to production. So there are three phases of adoption. You go with Dev Lab, which is very close to reality, and then you get into production. What else are you doing to make sure you're adopting these innovations? I would say the DNA of Google Cloud was starting from my experience more than 10 years ago, providing free quota on most all of the services that Google Cloud is, is proposing. So it's a very great opportunity, opportunity to test. You can test and learn without requesting to push your credit card and avoid any risk of expense. So that's very great. The second, which is very close to this one, is the pay-as-you-go model. So let's imagine you consume only for what you pay. I would not say uh, the competitors are the same because that's not true. You can, you can look at the catalogs of the solution on the market, and you will have probably a lot of difficulty to find the same experience on another tool, which lets you test and learn fast without requesting some big investment in terms of money, which is very great. And the last one, is probably the full serverless uh, model, meaning I don't have to, I would say, populate, organize, create, or imagine how big my platform has to be to accept all of my data. I don't care. I, I don't manage the infrastructure. My cloud service provider is doing that for me very well and probably better than me. So everyone has his jobs, but mine is to play SQL and your is to manage my platform. So that's great. That's great. And auto scaling definitely aligns with that type of thinking. Exactly. So you're very present online. I hope people are gonna follow you on LinkedIn 
And then, of course, they're going to see you across the web sharing your best practices. Antoine, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Until next time, I'm Bruno Ziza.